Artist Enough is an interview series in which we talk about the journey of becoming an artist and successes and struggles of being an artist. In the second episode, Cecilia Fox interviews Marnik Sixma, who is Groningen and based artist mainly working with the site-specific installations. His work questions the function of an artwork and playfully teases the expectation and anticipation of the audience. For the past years, he has been active in a Groningen art scene and also teaches in Minerva Art Academy. Uh, welcome. Thank you for coming to my interview. Uh, as a first question, I would like to ask, um, what is your like associations with the word art, and like how comfortable do you feel like calling yourself an artist? Um, good one. How how, uh, how broad do you want the associations to be? Just anything <laughs> that pops up with art, or no? It it doesn't has to go like super deep, but also yeah. maybe more like or when did you felt more comfortable calling yourself artist or because i think sometimes the word artist can be like a triggering uh, word or something yeah true uh i think there is quite a lot of um stigma around it as well in a way mm -hmm. um i think at at the day that i at, that i graduated mm -hmm. or that or graduation expo uh opens then there was somebody who came by and uh, asked like, uh, "Hey, can you?" She, uh, they wanted to film uh, me, my work, mm -hmm. and they were like, "Hey, can you introduce yourself?" And then I, I'm uh, almost giggling when I said like, "Hey, I'm Marnix and I'm an artist." <laughs> I couldn't, yeah. I couldn't say it with a straight face, mm -hmm. so I wasn't comfortable with that yet. And I think only maybe in the past, in the past year, I have started to really feel comfortable with it, mm -hmm. which is now almost you know four years later, but maybe from one year ago that felt more natural. Um, I think that's also because it just takes, it took a lot of time for me to build up a practice that I also felt comfortable with associating with maybe that bigger denominator of artist. Mm -hmm. Like art is such a big word sometimes, can be so charged. And if you say like, oh, I'm an artist, that can sound incredibly pretentious. Well, I really don't mean it in that way. I mean, it's yeah. just seriously like, okay, you know, a baker would introduce themselves as a baker. That's what they do for the profession. I do, I'm an artist as my profession. So I want to call myself an artist, you know? But was it for you, like, maybe like more when you felt like that you can like financially support yourself as an artist? Or is it more that you like kind of figured your like topics and things out in a art? Like, was it more like, Hmm. some kind of like personal feeling or like a outside validation in a way i th i think a bit of both um because these things also went kind of hand in hand uh normally i would maybe say because most of the money from my um company to say mm -hmm. is or my business is coming from video editing so mm -hmm. then i would say hey i'm arnix i'm I'm a video editor and mm -hmm. an artist, you know, or artist and video editor. Mm -hmm. I would mention both. Mm -hmm. um, and now I'm also having more projects, uh, and I guess in the past time, in the past year, I had more art projects uh, that I also could sustain myself with. Mm -hmm. Maybe also that made it easier to then say like, hey, I, I identify as an artist in the first place. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I think it went both that I, or it goes, through both paths, the one of just exploring my work and having grabbing, uh, getting a better understanding of um, that practice and feel like, okay, this is a practice I feel um, comfortable enough with, or I think this has enough ground, you know, to, mm -hmm. to carry that, that name. Yeah, I definitely uh, relate to that, that like, like during your like studies you often like experiment and do like this and that and then at some point you are this moment that like everything that you have ever done like kind of makes sense and that you like yeah. feel like that oh i understand what i want to do yeah. like do you maybe know like a specific work or a moment that that was this moment for you like maybe like a like a kind of like a key work or or something um well i i think or in any case, in, throughout the past year, I've been thinking a lot about the work that I did graduate mm -hmm. with. Mm -hmm. But there's kind of like a, 
a conflict happening within me as well because I think that was the first the first work in which a lot of uh, threads got connected mm -hmm. in which I started to become or I allowed myself to be more playful and add more humor to my work mm -hmm. but also be personal and vulnerable too mm -hmm. so I got into the spot in which I could mock like the, the world or the rules around art but also I would mock myself too mm -hmm. um, I think that has been a really important step um, and I did that back, back to my book uh, the artist book I made I graduated mm -hmm. with Art Shoot Mm -hmm. um, but I also really see that as more just a starting point. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, um, for some other people, it might have been easier. They graduated and maybe identified as a painter, for example, mm -hmm. and could just keep on exploring that path. While for me, I felt I just found a path mm -hmm. and I didn't really know how to call it yet. Mm -hmm. So it was quite hard to then um introduce yourself and make it clear to other people what what you would do in a next project for example mm -hmm. i was still so much exploring um even though with that work i felt very much comfortable when i graduated but afterwards i, I needed a couple of years to mm -hmm. you know let that sink in and try new things and then reconnect with mm -hmm. those old connections i think if that makes sense yeah no it <laughs> makes uh, definitely sense and uh, i think from this that uh, talk I would also uh, have a next question which is like if you would have to like describe your like uh, because yeah for you it like took like a bit time to like uh, like find out what your artistic practice is about but if you would have yeah. to describe your artistic practice with one word then what is your like artistic practice rooted in like yeah. it could be like a medium it could yeah. be emotion it could be like totally like a random thing like yeah um, to to describe the foundation of the work yeah. in one word, or like for example, for me, I would say that my art practice is rooted in writing. Like that is yeah. something that I feel the most like comfortable with. But it could be yeah. like whatever. It could be like like totally random like answer, or it could be like even an emotion or something. Yeah, exactly. Um, well. The, the word that pops up, actually, one well, of the first words that pops up, I was actually thinking about yesterday, and, but that's, I don't know if that's a good word, but I'm actually thinking of ungraspability. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so I think my work, I'm really trying to catch the things that are actually not that visible or are mm -hmm. normally not the main focus points. Mm -hmm. So the kind of layers around something maybe physical or mm -hmm. presentable like expectations mm -hmm. um, or the um, the aftermath of something mm -hmm. and those are normally very invisible you know but I think they're very much part of a work so mm -hmm. for me it's very much about questioning what an artwork can be or an artistic experience can be um, and I do that every time in a different way mm -hmm. So, yeah, and graspability is maybe a word, but that's also so fake. And then it sounds like, I don't know if people would make any sense of that. No, I, I think it's really fitting and I really, I really get why you say it. And because you always have so much like playfulness and, and yeah, in your work. I, I, can I maybe elaborate with, mm -hmm. because, uh, thank you, by the way. Uh, I appreciate you saying that. But what I was also thinking of, because when I, when I was still studying, I was working a lot with film. Mm -hmm. And also now I'm uh, teaching a class at, at the academy that is departing from film. Mm -hmm. But normally, you know, when people say, like, hey, Marnix, you're not making films anymore, what's happening? Then, you know, I'm a bit frustrated because I don't associate myself as, as a filmmaker. Mm -hmm. But in a way, I do identify the work in a certain sense very cinematic. Mm -hmm. but, but as um when they are combined you know or it puts in a line i see those works kind of as scenes or as different shots mm -hmm. you know in, in film you can talk about um the the kuleshev effect i don't know if you're familiar with it mm, no. it's um it's when it's it's a theory of one shot together with another shot actually creates more mm -hmm. than just those shots separately mm -hmm. so um a shot of, I don't know, a shot of a mug and a shot of a building, if you put them next to each other or after each other, 
you will create a narrative out of them. Mm -hmm. yeah. And this, of course, goes for, I think, any artistic practice. But I think for me, there is something very interesting in this phenomenon. And I think every work I make kind of grasps back to previous works and references already to works that are not mm -hmm. there yet. I think this is something really interesting to explore. So there's something very cinematic, like they are scenes where there are different shots. It's a story told, and it can be very abstract. It doesn't mm -hmm. have to be a linear story, you know? So this also this is something I'm just thinking about these days. Yeah, and I think also there is a lot of connection between like a film and like an installation, because yeah. it's like the approach in it, in a way. Yeah, an installation can evoke a certain... Uh, feeling if, uh, and that can be a confusing feeling but this is what I can like a lot about cinema as mm -hmm. well you know when I go to a film and it's not really clear what's being depicted or, or told and you're just there guessing a bit there can be something super fresh to that mm -hmm. and um, I, I think I'm trying to aim for a certain experience as well when you enter an installation I make or a place that I have an installation in that's it's not immediately clear what's being conveyed, you know? Mm -hmm. But yeah. it it does request a certain openness to then also let that sink in or be open to, hmm, uh, why would I see what I now see, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, you also mentioned that you're like a now teacher at school, but yeah. my question is also like, uh, how do you like look back to your own art studies? Like how were them for you? Or like, do you even, uh, find it important to like uh, study art or do you think you could also be artist without studying ah uh that's a tricky one um i i, I think it's possible to um make art or build up a practice without being in an academy although i wouldn't recommend it i think mm -hmm. um it, it, yeah, I, I feel I feel mixed about it because I think there is put so much weight on an, an academy or mm. being in an academy, and um, that that now the conclusion can be like nowadays that uh, oh you haven't studied at an academy um, that means your work ain't shit you know mm. there's nothing of value there mm. I think for example also same goes for for film academies you know in mm. Holland you only have one like the film academy. Mm -hmm. And you have re film related uh, studies, but they are already lower lower in the ranking. Mm -hmm. But for example, if um, you you graduate with a film at, at the academy that I studied at, you wouldn't be taken seriously by the film world. Mm -hmm. And this is the same, I think, with art as well. It's it, it's such a hard balance. So so sometimes like uh, like having like a studying is just like to like prove the valid validity of being artist in a way uh yeah that's how it now is being like it's how it's being considered i think by the the, the art world mm -hmm. around mm -hmm. uh, the academy while the academy itself i think is also really open and inviting so it's not this mm -hmm. is what i'm saying it's not necessarily like a um like a diss to the mm -hmm. <laughs> to the academy system necessarily i think it's very good to go there how i experience it myself is like growing up for the second time mm -hmm. you know like uh, how you're at home and um you're you're being raised by whomever and uh you learn how the world mm -hmm. functions a bit and mm -hmm. when you know enough about it not all mm -hmm. by far not all but when you know enough you're free to you know leave the nest mm -hmm. and i think the art academy is kind of similar that it's relatively a really safe environment in which mm -hmm. you can try a lot of things mm -hmm. you're being encouraged to try a lot of things you're allowed to fail um and the world around the academy when you leave is a lot more harsh mm -hmm. i mean i i would still be open towards failure i think it's very healthy but there is this stigma on failure and when you leave the academy you should do everything perfectly in a way mm -hmm. so i think it's very good to go to an academy so you have a couple of years in which you can experiment freely um to really have this like safe space like to yeah, experimentation to a... and uh, like yeah. test out things and yeah. i think you really like naturally went to one of the questions that i wanted to ask yeah. which is like 
when have you like experienced like an artistic failure or like what does it even mean for you is it like it could be something like more public failure but yeah. it could be also like really personal failure that looked like a success or something so, because i think failure is also really like complicated like um, true uh, sorry i don't want to interrupt you <laughs> no, no. <laughs> okay <laughs> it, it is quite complicated and um to be fair when i was studying as I, I think even though there was a a lot of room to to play and experiments i still i think i still was quite harsh on myself mm -hmm. so i i think I, I could have given myself more room to fail mm -hmm. then again i also undoubtedly did fail countless times um by just trying and then hearing back like yeah this is, this is not working <laughs> you know mm -hmm. and i was like oh yeah actually you're quite right on that um but i think could have filled more would maybe have been good but i don't know um but yeah just trying something out and you, you try to copy things that you see work in a different environment mm -hmm. you know and one time i made for example a, a short film and it was about it was very much uh, centered on dreams mm -hmm. um or a couple of dreams i had and i wanted to make a narrative out of it and then i actually presented it in a space where i actually placed my own bed and mm -hmm. you can sit at the bed and then watch the film and then one of my teachers actually told me like yeah i really don't like that bed there make it so literal now uh while i could have seen it work in like a different video work in a museum mm -hmm. also have something very much hinting towards that and back then i was just trying to copy that you know like you know in a way wanting to do something that i thought like oh this is a valid way of, of art and then um I think through that remark, then I also reflect like, yeah, but what do I want to have there? How mm -hmm. how many connections do I want to be with something you see? Does that need to come back again in a physical sense? Um, so I think it's confrontations like these that, yeah, just give you the space to then question mm -hmm. why you're doing things or how something works or why it would work or whether you actually want it to work that way. So when we talk about like uh, failure, then in a way you also like, say that there is not enough space to like make like a bad artwork or like that we should have like more ability to fail in a way um yeah i personally think there should be more more room to fail because uh actually i think because it's being dumped down to like a total sum of things mm -hmm. you know and like a, a good artwork can actually have no mistakes in there anymore or like very small mistakes but they're forgivable um and otherwise it's it's like for example also with films you know i i also actually tend to think of this way myself if i visit a film now i'm thinking like at a certain point like hmm, how many how many stars would i give this film you know like mm -hmm. a one to five star rating and somewhere is a line in which it becomes a bad film or a good film you know well a film can be really bad but there can be a moment that i really appreciate and i'm so happy that i saw it that i witnessed it you know and this is the same with 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 art or work that people make in the end you know uh, uh, there is so much of of whatever people make that you just wouldn't vibe with that you don't like but there will be parts that you really like and maybe they are just small parts but it does give something still yeah. and and if you make a heart uh, um, division between good and bad art or good and bad work and all the bad work should just not be exposed or uh, exhibited or shown or bought or whatever then um it, it filters away so much while actually i think there are a lot of things that would be very valuable to people yeah and i think also like when like we like talk about art and we talk about good or bad like it becomes like so like the whole like talk becomes like so superficial i yes. don't think like good or bad should like even be like a criteria to like look at like i think when you we look at it's more about like what did you get out of it how yeah. it, how it made you feel or like you know and and also like as an artist you kind of need to find your like own audiences and like yeah. like i really feel that there is like space for each kind of art like it doesn't yeah. has to like there is no like one way of making art no, I I also think so. And by creating criteria and rules, even though for a part I get that they are there, but it's it's exclusive. 
you know, and, and, and it's, it's, it diminishes the possibility for an audience to find the right work or the other way around for the work to find the right audience. Uh, yeah, actually, one small thing that I wanted yeah. to also ask based on the, uh, like, the good and bad art, like, how did you experience, like, uh, like during the studies that, like, people are graded with, like, numbers? Like, did, yeah. did this gave you some kind of, like, pressure or or... And also now as a teacher, how do you like see it? Like, yeah. should we give grades or? Uh, because I think there is yeah. also some kind of like, like some kind of competition is like healthy and it can be really yeah. motivating, but it can also become like really like toxic if you're like too attached on this like results and uh, like yeah. opinions of others. Uh, yes, very much so. I, I, um, as always, I'm mixed in this. I feel mixed. <laughs> Not no. I I was actually just having a talk about this a couple of days ago, and I I I think it would be wise to refrain from using grades in the future. Uh, ASAP, uh, I think. But but at the same time, I think I have benefited from the system too. Mm. You know mm. from. I, I think I also can benefit from competition or pressure mm. or but at the same time I also feel very conflicted because I do feel feel this in myself mm. that you know it can create a certain fire that I just mm. create my work through then. Like oh I'll show you or something, you know, but that I actually not not lately that much anymore though. Um but I think ideally people should just focus at their own practice and not the practice of other people. And I think by, by giving those grades and making it very clearly like where you would express us in letters or as in, in, in numbers, um, people will then so much compare themselves to the people around them, um, kind of get lost in that way. Yeah. You and know, some people were struggling very much with, for example, that grading system. While for me, I think what was also for me, it, it helps me like getting a grade would be about the grade would be about your process mm -hmm. that you've made from the previous moment of measuring mm -hmm. to put it a bit more math uh, like mm -hmm. uh, uh, clinically mm -hmm. or st sterile um so it was about making process so a higher grade would mean you had made more process mm -hmm. for yourself so i think in that way it was a number that you i i learned to interpret that through mm -hmm. uh, through the years you know i think in my third year i understood way better why I would give a certain grade or what it would mean to me and how mm -hmm. I could reply to that, mm -hmm. regardless of how they would have phrased the reasoning behind it. Um, well, in the first year, it was a lot of panic around these grades mm -hmm. and people didn't understand. And some people would stick with that feeling throughout the whole, mm -hmm. the whole studies, you know? And in that sense, I think even though you could decipher it and make a narrative out of it that would help for you that wouldn't work for everybody and in that sense i think it's way better to just um to finalize this long detour um to just give a pass or fill mm -hmm. you know and have a talk about what could be better yeah and yeah how i teach myself now together with a colleague we only give sufficient or insufficient and we give some words to you know um to help them move onward from that course, but we're not giving grades anymore because, yeah, then people just will compare in the end again, and they should focus at their own work. I think. Yeah, at the end of the day, it's just like finding out your like inner logic as artist. I think. Yeah, exactly. And and uh, one teacher at academy said like, "Hey, this you know your work is it's it's not a race with other people. It's a race with yourself, mm -hmm. if any. You know, if any race." Um, and that, that did stuck with and did stick with me because um, it's pointless to compare with other people. Mm -hmm. Everybody has a different process, and yeah, I felt when I came out of the academy and I felt a bit lost, having found something new. But then also like, oh, but how does this actually work? Mm -hmm. How does this practice then? How should I describe it or something? You know, I needed I needed to figure out a lot of things. Mm -hmm. It's uh, infinitely mean towards yourself to then just compare with someone who is immediately successful. Mm -hmm. They have a completely different path. 
you should just follow your own path, you know, and see how you can improve on that path. Yeah. And uh, on the other hand, if we would uh, talk about like successes, like is yeah. there a, like a moment that you feel like really like big artistic success and like, like, and again, was it more like internal or like external? And it could be like a specific artwork or, or something like that. Yeah, exactly. Um, or just also like a milestone or. Uh... Yeah, there, there have been a couple of moments, um, like for example, the work that I was graduating with, I think then I felt very much in the zone that mm -hmm. things were aligning and that mm -hmm. I felt like internally I felt doing something that I was vibing with, but also other people were vibing with it. So, you know, it was like a very good communication of things. Um, yeah, I think, for example, a work that I made like half a year later, that was in, I was presenting it, I think, to November 2019. Mm -hmm. And um, I was working with this park, like this small forest in the city. And um, we were invited to make works specific for this place. Mm -hmm. um, and in the end, you know, to cut the story a bit short, keep it a bit small, um, I decided to seal off that whole forest. Mm -hmm. So the whole perimeter, I took this, like, um, uh, how do you call it? Like this red and white tape, mm -hmm. you know, to seal off areas like the police uses and stuff. And I sealed it up in a very ridiculous way. It was overabundantly present. Mm -hmm. uh, like every line of tape would be accompanied by five more layers of tape mm -hmm. or something. So you have like whole walls of tape. Um, and I left the entrances open and I put signs there with your welcome. Mm -hmm. And um, so it was not clear whether it actually meant like, you are welcome, please enter. Mm -hmm. Or it was like, you know, um, there you go. Mm -hmm. um, I, I fixed something for you, you know, mm -hmm. and, and um, then actually the organization, because I was working with uh, Henry Sword back then, mm -hmm. uh, they, they got called by the municipality the same instant who actually gave them the permits mm -hmm. for us to be working with at park. And mm -hmm. they were saying, you really need to remove this tape. Mm -hmm. So they gave permission for our work um, and then said they wanted to actually revoke that, that permit again, that, mm -hmm. that they wanted to come back uh, at their own decision. Mm -hmm. And I think that, in a way, felt like being successful. Mm -hmm. That also, I, I did not expect that much response, actually, even though it was noticeable from the streets, mm -hmm. you know, from the, for the outside world. I, that was also why I wanted to put it at the perimeter of the park. So people who, just like me, I didn't know that place, actually. I knew the location, but I didn't mm -hmm. know what was in it. And I thought, I, from stories around me, I gathered that a lot of people had the same experience. So I wanted to look up that friction, you know, like, you know, mm -hmm. something, you know, a place, but you actually know nothing about it. Um, I didn't expect so much responses or so much chaos to, um, and like follow out of that. And then I felt like, um, even though it was maybe a bit uncontrolled, mm -hmm. maybe that was also the, the, the beauty of it, that I couldn't predict how it would go. You know, you, you take a risk and then something follows and, um, Yeah, yeah I was really, quite happy with how it went. Yeah, it really, I think as an artist, you like, like you make like plans in your head and you like yeah. think like how you want, like how you want like an audience to experience your work. Yeah. And then like when in real life, it like really plays out as you expected or you really get this reaction, then this is really like this moment of success in a way, I think. Yeah, it's... Um when I was actually preparing for that project, um, because I was doing a residency mm -hmm. at the resort, and one of the artists they were um, uh, connecting to us was Alban Karsten, mm -hmm. who made a work in which he crashed a car. Mm -hmm. You know, he actually, the whole project was that he could learn how to drive a car in order to crash it to a wall, mm -hmm. um, which I thought was hilarious. And he was actually telling me, like, you know, the fact that you take a risk, uh, also creates a certain meaning to it, you know, like if there is no risk, what is there to be gained then, you know, mm -hmm. uh, shortly summarized, mm -hmm. paraphrased. And I still feel the same with works that I make, that uh, I, I go a certain direction with the work and then I'm like, oh, I don't, I don't know how that would turn out mm -hmm. or maybe this is 
you know, my works have become quite minimal, for example, mm -hmm. uh, like small in appearance or even seemingly non-existent in appearance. Mm -hmm. And for me, it also is like this friction, like, mm, I don't know. I don't know if I can actually do this, if I can mm -hmm. pull this off, mm -hmm. you know, but um, there's also something spicy to that, too. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, OK, but actually, probably this also tells me something that it's it's OK to, to try. Mm -hmm. And I do say try, even though I'm, I'm very serious about this trying, like. Taking risks doesn't, or trying doesn't mean it's not serious. Um, I think it's very valuable to still allow some room that something actually might not work, mm. you know, or it will go wrong. Uh, well, not, not wrong is not a good word. Um, mm. No, I I can definitely like like sense this uh, like yeah this this pleasure in this risk taking that it's also ooh like like really it could be also be really like painful but if yeah. it works it's like really worth it or something and yeah exactly it's something also like um if you yeah there's a certain urgency like you still want to do it mm -hmm. and that gives also the value to it. like oh if i wouldn't do this now then i would regret it mm -hmm. you know and um that can then be also part of that work Mm -hmm. what, what will happen afterwards you can still think afterwards like oh i could have improved this and this and this and this mm -hmm. or i should have done this differently mm -hmm. or i made a miscalculation here and that can just happen um so i'm still reflecting on some works that i did you know prior that i think like mm, maybe i should have taken a different course of action but then again you it, it's not like um I don't know, it's not like a, a game of chess or something in which you can just, you know, you need to think mm -hmm. this, you think, uh, you need to think ahead more of your opponents. Mm -hmm. uh, this is, well, I, I, I suck at chess. I, I'm not a good chess player <laughs> or something, but I, it's, um, uh, this is like, this feels like infinitely more complicated because you cannot account for people. You know, you can maybe think ahead a bit and take, uh, vulnerabilities into account and make sure that I don't know. I find it important that I don't offend people in a way that I don't want. You know, I I mm -hmm. want it to still be kind of safe. Mm -hmm. I want to be respectful, mm -hmm. um, but I cannot think ahead for every discipline's perspective yeah. on life. And I think there is in that interaction there is just room for failure, but also room for um, discussions that are actually very worthwhile. Mm -hmm. You know? Yes. <laughs> I wanted to say something, but I forgot. Oh, no. I, I took you from your train <laughs> of thought. No, no. <laughs> it, it was connected with that. Um, yeah, I think, like, as an artist, you really, like, need some kind of, like, inner logic and inner trust, in a way. Like, and yeah. also, like, the way you talk about, like, a failure and risk and, and, the, and yeah, I think it's really... Uh, beautiful and I think uh, one of the things that I'm also personally really interested in is in the connection between like uh, art and the suffering and yeah. how do you feel about this like uh, pair of words or like mm. do you need you need to like suffer to do art or can you <laughs> also be excuse me <laughs> yeah, yeah, could be. can you also be like do like happy art in a way because or I don't know, because mm. I feel like that art is always rooted in some kind of like problem or something yeah. you want to change. Yeah. Like the suffering yeah. doesn't need to be like so obvious. It can be no. also like kind of like, oh, I'm upset about this thing in a world and that's why I do my art, yeah. you know. Ex exactly. Um, yeah, I get what you mean. I, I think I'm a bit mixed on this too. Mm. I'm mixed about a lot of things. Um, I also am difficult just to give like a straightforward answer. But with this, it's quite complicated because there is this very romantic myth around um, artists and, and and these suffering. Mm -hmm. um, with plenty of artists, like you know, like Van Gogh, and it's mm -hmm. so much connected. And it's actually interesting because I just read an article a week ago, I think, in which they were also questioning this 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 connection. And actually, I think um, scientists this research this connection and. They were connected, but not not in a causal relationship. Mm -hmm. So it was more like actually the maker benefited from making work, mm -hmm. 
to actually mm -hmm. deal with their suffering. But mm -hmm. it wasn't the suffering that caused you know, mm -hmm. them to create work in the first place or made them successful. Mm -hmm. um, even though, you, of course, you can still argue with that in a way. But um, I think like, I'm, I'm a bit pessimistic maybe in nature while I'm also throughout the years have become more hopeful and pessimistic too. Uh, pessimistic. Positive. Positive. <laughs> Positivistic is like, it's like becoming a possum or something. Um, uh, I, I think human um, life is, in a way, just rooted in suffering, but not in a depressing way. But I think everybody suffers in a way or not. You know, even if they think they live a normal life, there are frictions occurring, mm -hmm. there are miscommunications, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, just the fact just because of the fact that life cannot be happy all the time the the better moments become valuable or the struggle becomes valuable mm -hmm. you know or there's for me then a direction becomes here something to overcome and that's i think then adds value i think with art or the creative process it's um yeah very connected to this and even like positive art indeed is still fixing a certain problem or wanting to show that uh, the, the the other side of the coin you mm -hmm. know and so there's still some um i uh, struggle all these words are negative to charge i also want to say fight but fight is also <laughs> negative but there's you know you you want to deal with something and you um maybe that is by showing misery or you want to show the opposite i think they are very much they're very much just a discussion. It's all reactions to something happening to everybody. Mm -hmm. But this is going in like so many different forms and everybody's mm -hmm. having their own path in it. Mm. That sounds maybe a bit generic if I say it like that. But, <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, is, uh, is this a bit of an answer to your question? It's... Yes, yes, yes. Um... I should also elaborate on how it is in my own practice or oh yeah i would like to know yeah okay um I, i'm saying this but i don't have an answer yet <laughs> um yeah because i have also i think i have been struggling a lot especially before i went to the academy with finding um a path mm -hmm. or a, a purpose to say and i think i think that's still it's not like I'm done struggling or done searching. Mm -hmm. um, but I think this attitude maybe has become clear in my work now. I think the work is, in a lot of cases, quite existential in nature mm -hmm. um, or asking questions that are going towards this existential corner of discussions, mm -hmm. you know? Um, but they're all just showing separate angles on their separate takes. You know, like like a question like what's the meaning of life is way too big to ask you know you can ask it but it's close to impossible to answer it and it's better to just take like break it into smaller parts i think mm -hmm. um maybe that's what i'm doing for my work so in a way it is rooted in suffering <laughs> but not that negative a way um yeah it's just finding for, yeah, for me, I think as an artist, maybe I'm suffering by all the other art around me already. <laughs> you know, so much has been done. Mm -hmm. And for me, I, I can appreciate art that other people make. But when someone else has done it, I don't know, for me, there's no point in trying to go that same way anymore mm -hmm. or something. So I want to do something that's very close to me and still feels worthwhile to, to make in a world that already contains so much. Mm -hmm. Um, and the works that come out of that try to find maybe little snippets of answers to that search, mm -hmm. I think. Yeah, no, I think, yeah, definitely, like, through art, you, like, it's maybe, like, rooted in struggles, but, but you, like, transform it to something, like, beautiful or... or yeah. Or, or it, like, art doesn't have to be beautiful, of course, but... no. But yeah, beauty is also a word that then has been um, spit up, spat upon so much. Uh, although I think, like, yeah, in a way, beauty is very much there. Uh, sometimes, yeah, poetry might be a better word for it, but all of these words can become pretentious very fast. Mm -hmm. 
or can be perceived like that. Um, but I think indeed for me, yeah, if, if I can just speak freely here, I think indeed beauty or make something beautiful, yeah, maybe that's a very flat term for it, but it's, yeah, creating something meaningful, mm -hmm. you know, or potentially meaningful mm -hmm. that somebody can take something out of that. Yeah, I'm trying to find like connections between my own search and the search of someone else, you know, even though I don't know how their search is, but you try to create, establish, I try to establish some connection with my audience. Um, but yeah. then again, I also don't want to to make it too too much on the nose, mm -hmm. you know, or uh, force them mm -hmm. to create that connection. I'm really, what I'm actually trying to do is creating an inviting attitude mm -hmm. through myself and through my work mm -hmm. uh, in which it's possible to make that connection. But it's okay to not make it, you know? Yeah, no, I think it's definitely like really nice observation that, that as an artist, you are like in this struggle of like something that you want to show and like how other person receives it. And there is always this <clears throat> tension in yourself, like, like as an artist, I think. Yeah. I think maybe we slowly start like uh, closing off the interview. Okay. And is there like something that you're currently busy with or something that you would like to like share or bring attention to? Like maybe some upcoming project or um Um Well, I'm I'm currently working on a project for a festival mm -hmm. uh in Ampegendam called Terug naar het Begin, mm -hmm. in which um some other artists as well, but me as well, have been approach to create works for in separate churches mm -hmm. so this is the first time i actually work with the church which i find really really exciting mm -hmm. um i don't want to say too much about what i'm gonna do mm -hmm. there but um yeah again i'm trying to find a very subtle way to enter that church mm -hmm. you know and create a space um that is worthwhile to explore um yeah, maybe I shouldn't tell so much about it, but this is this is going to be in three weeks from now. It's like uh, 3rd and 4th of June. Mm -hmm. um, free entrance, you can just visit. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't really mean to actually pitch the... or yeah, <laughs> do a sales yeah. pitch or something. But the other part I'm really noticing in the past months, but just throughout the past years as well, is that I really like to write about my practice and... Mm -hmm. The combination of the personal part as well mm -hmm. you know i as a person me as a person is developing and transiting to different chapters into you know mm -hmm. new new forms mm -hmm. and my work is as well and i think they're so much connected that my my newsletter i, I maintain a newsletter mm -hmm. is very much the part where everything gets together and i really want to explore this more actually in the coming mm -hmm. well, coming time um yeah, I think this is where part of the magic actually happens for me in any case. Yeah. So through this writing. Yeah, I'm I'm really excited about the project in Up and Dam, and I also really love your newsletter, and I think it's also like really like special way to like really find like more like intimate like contact with your audience, and I really like have also enjoyed like reading your newsletter because yeah, yeah I think often like art becomes like a bit like superficial or something, or like I place it in a like gallery or something but yeah. but you really also have this urge to have like this deeper level of connection with the audience and and i think it's really beautiful thank you and it really comes across in your side so yeah that's very that's very nice here yeah it's this it's this i'm very aware that my well in general for everybody but existence is so temporal you know it's so short and um through my writing, I don't know, it's it's quite a short medium maybe, but it's it's different than putting something on Instagram or mm -hmm. on social media. It's for me this just fits way better. Mm -hmm. I can actually connect and it's nice to see that people actually or receive that positive feedback by people that actually mm -hmm. like that you share more about, you know, what's what's going on. Mm -hmm. Because they apparently connect with this too. You know, I think this even though it's a temporal process to exist, you know, and it's ongoing and it's per permanently changing. Mm -hmm. um, I think in sharing this, 
sharing how it's go, uh, how how it is to be in that process mm. is a very lovely thing to do. Yeah, no, I definitely really relate to that because I think that's why I also started this like project of interviewing artists to really have like more like meaningful conversation about art and not just like you know sometimes art just becomes like a gesture or like yeah and really like i also really get what why you do it what you do <laughs> so yeah thank you very much for being my guest thank you for watching cecilia fox art tv please subscribe to the channel do not miss out the upcoming episodes and to learn more about the work of marnik sixma check out the description box down below